The Battle of Mugar Ridge, officially known by the British as the Action of El Mugar, took place on 13 November 1917 during the pursuit phase of the Southern Palestine Offensive of the Sinai and Palestine Campaign in the First World War. Fighting between the advancing Egyptian Expeditionary Force and the retreating Yildir Imami group, occurred after the Battle of Beersheba, and the Third Battle of Gaza. Operations occurred over an extensive area north of the Gaza to Beersheba line and west of the road from Beersheba to Jerusalem via Hebron. Strong Ottoman army positions from Gaza to the foothills of the Judean hills had successfully held out against British Empire forces for a week after the Ottoman army was defeated at Beersheba. But the next day, the 8th of November, the main Ottoman base at Sharia was captured after two days fighting and a British Yeomanry cavalry charge at Huj captured guns. Ottoman units along the whole line were in retreat. The 21st Corps and Desert Mounted Corps attacked the Ottoman 8th Army on an extended front from the Judean foothills across the Mediterranean coastal plain from 10 to 14 November. Beginning on 10 November at Sumil, an Ottoman counterattack by the 7th Army was eventually blocked by mounted units while on 13 November in the centre a cavalry charge assisted by infantry captured two fortified villages and on 14 November, to the north at Ayunkara an Ottoman rearguard position was successfully attacked by mounted units. Junction station was captured and the Ottoman railway link with Jerusalem was cut. As a result of this victory the Ottoman 8th Army withdrew behind the Nahr el Auja, and their 7th Army withdrew toward Jerusalem. Chapter 1 – Background After the capture of Beersheba on 31 October, from 1 to 7 November, strong Ottoman rearguard units at Tel el Kuilf in the southern Judean hills, at Hera and Sharia on the maritime plain, and at Gaza close to the Mediterranean coast, held the Egyptian expeditionary force in heavy fighting. During this time the Ottoman army was able to withdraw in good order, the rearguard garrisons retiring under cover of darkness during the night of 8 slash the 9th of November 1917. The delay caused by these rearguards may have seriously compromised the British Empire advance as there was not much time to conclude military engagements in southern Palestine. The winter rains were expected to start in the middle of the month and the black soil plain which was currently firm, facilitating the movements of large military units would with the rains become a giant boggy quagmire, impassable for wheeled vehicles and very heavy marching for infantry. With the rains the temperatures which were currently hot during the day and pleasant at night would drop rapidly to become piercingly cold. In 1917 the rains began on the 19th of November just as the infantry began their advance into the Judean hills. The strength of the 7th and 8th Ottoman armies, before the attack at Beersheba on 31 October, was estimated to have been 45,000 rifles, 1,500 sabres and 300 guns. This force had been made up of the 7th Army's incomplete three corps. The 3rd Corps 24th Infantry Division was at Kawuka and its 27th Infantry Division was at Beersheba. Its 3rd Cavalry Division, as well as the 16th, 19th, and 24th Infantry Divisions were also in the area to the east of the Gaza-Beersheba line. The 7th Army was commanded by Fivsi Chikmak. The 8th Army's 22 Corps was based at Gaza while its 20 Corps was based at Sharia, in the center of the Gaza Beersheba line. Supporting these two corps had been two reserve divisions, the 7th and 19th Infantry Divisions. The 8th Army was commanded by Friedrich Freier Kress von Kressenstein and at that time had an estimated 2,894 officers, 69,709 men, 29,116 rifles, 403 machine guns, and 268 guns. Chapter 2, Prelude During 7-8 November rearguards of the 7th and 8th Ottoman armies delayed the advance of Lt. Gen. Harry Chevelle's Desert Mounted Corps, Major Gen. Edmund Hakewell Smith's 52nd Division, and Major Gen. Philip C. Palin's 75th Division. The Desert Mounted Corps consisted of the Anzac Mounted Division, the Australian Mounted Division, and the Yeomanry Mounted Division. 
The 52nd Division and 75th Division formed part of Lieutenant General Edward Bolfin's 21 Corps. On the coast, the 52nd Division was fought a fierce action after crossing the Wadi El Hesi on the coast north of Gaza. By the morning of the 8th of November, two infantry brigades had crossed the Wadi El Hesi near its mouth and, despite some opposition, established themselves on the sand dunes to the north towards Ascalon. Sausage Ridge on their right stretched from Berbera to Deir Sinead, was held in considerable strength, as the ridge covered the road and railway from Gaza to the north. During the afternoon the 155th Brigade moved to attack Sausage Ridge, but it was threatened by a counter-attack on the left forcing, the brigade to halt and face north to meet this attack. When the 156th Brigade arrived from S.H. Island on the Wadi El Hesi, the 157th Brigade attacked the southern portion of the ridge, and gained a footing as darkness fell. They lost this precarious position four times to fierce Ottoman counter-attacks, before strongly attacking and throwing the defenders off the ridge by 2100 hours. The two attacking brigades lost 700 men in this action. The Ottoman rearguards were able to safely get away during the night of the 8th-9th of November, but during the following day the only infantry unit capable of advancing was the 52nd Division's 156th Brigade, commanded by Brigadier General Archibald Herbert Leggett. The division's other brigades were regrouping after the fierce fighting at the Wadi Hesse. The brigade moved to Ashkelon, which was found to be deserted. By evening advance troops had pressed on to al 16 miles from Gaza, where they secured abandoned stores and water. By the 9th of November the 8th Army had retreated 20 miles while the 7th Army had lost hardly any ground. Most of the Egyptian Expeditionary Forces infantry divisions were at the end of their lines of communication and were not able to follow up the Ottoman withdrawal. 21 Corps 54th Division was forced to rest at Gaza, and the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade at Beit Hanun. In the rear, Lieutenant General Philip Chetwood's 20 Corps had transferred its transport to 21 Corps. 20 Corps' 60th Division was resting at Hooge and its 10th and 74th Divisions were at Calm. The only units in the field were the 53rd Division, Corps Cavalry, the Imperial Camel Corps Brigade and the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, deployed in the front line near Tel El Kuralf in the foothills of the Judean Hills north of Beersheba. Allenby wrote on the 8th of November, the battle is in full swing. We have driven the Turks N and Eni and my pursuing troops are 10 miles beyond Gaza, and travelling fast. A lot of Turks are cut off, just any of Gaza. I don't know if they will be caught, but there is no time to waste in catching them. They pooped off a huge explosion this morning, presumably ammunition. My army is all over the place, now on a front of 35 miles, my flying men are having the time of their lives, bombing and machine gunning the retreating columns, I fancy that Kress von Kressenstein is nearing the Jaffa Jerusalem line, himself. Chapter 2 Section 1, Mounted Troop Movements on the 9th of November Chaita's Anzac Mounted Division moved off across the maritime plain towards the coast soon after daylight on the 9th of November, having watered their horses the previous evening. The advance was led by two brigades, on the left the 1st Light Horse Brigade and on the right the 2nd Light Horse Brigade rode in line, each responsible for their own front and outer flanks, the attached 7th Mounted Brigade formed a reserve. By about 8.30 the 1st Light Horse Brigade had entered Berre and around an hour later the 2nd Light Horse Brigade was approaching Friedrich Freier Kress von Kressenstein's 8th Army headquarters at Hulekart. Here Ottoman soldiers were discovered to be occupying a strong position on high ground northwest of the village, the brigade made a dismounted attack capturing 600 prisoners along with large amounts of supplies, materiel and an abandoned German field hospital. At midday El Mejdal, 13 miles northeast of Gaza, was occupied with little difficulty by the 1st Light Horse Brigade, who captured 170 prisoners and found a good well with a steam pump enabling the brigade to water all horses expeditiously. After passing the ancient town of Ashkelon a message was received from the Desert Mounted Corps notifying the Anzac Mounted Division that the British 21 Corps were marching towards El Mejdal and Julus. 
The main Ottoman road and railway leading north from Gaza were both cut and as a consequence, Chevel ordered the division to advance towards Beit Daras. The division duly turned northeast with the 1st Light Horse Brigade entering east due close to the Mediterranean Sea. On the right, the 2nd Light Horse Brigade captured the villages of Swafa el Sharkie and Arak Suvidan, a convoy and its escort. While the brigade was reorganizing, Ottoman guns further north opened fire, shelling both captors and captives alike. Just before dark the 2nd Light Horse Brigade captured a further 200 prisoners. The Anzac Mounted Division took up a night battle outpost line along high ground south of the Wadi Mejma, from near Izdud to Arak Suvidan. During its journey across the maritime plain to Izdud, the Anzac Mounted Division captured many prisoners but met no large organized Ottoman force. As the day progressed, the captured Ottoman units were found to be increasingly disorganized with many soldiers, suffering severely from thirst and exhaustion and some from dysentery. Allenby wrote on 9 November, Things are going well. I have infantry already in Ascalon, and am pushing in, inland of that place. I know of 77 guns having been taken, and 5,000 prisoners at least. I went to Gaza, this afternoon, was taken by Bolfin, quite easily. The attack, on the 6th inst, went with such a rush that Gaza became untenable. Tomorrow is likely to be a critical day, in our pursuit. If the Turks can't stop us tomorrow, they are done. Meanwhile, Hodgson's Australian Mounted Division, spent most of the 9th of November searching for water, which was eventually found at Hooge. After most of the horses had been watered, they advanced 16 miles to the Castini's Dude Line capturing prisoners, guns, and transports on the way. This march during the night of 9-10th of November was the only night march made through Ottoman territory of the campaign. The Australian Mounted Division was led by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade as advanced guard, with an artillery battery attached. The 5th Mounted Brigade, two squadrons of which had made the charge at Hooge the day before, followed, with the 4th Light Horse Brigade forming the rearguard. To ensure the division maintained its cohesion throughout the night, the advance guard placed pickets along the route every 440 yards. These were picked up, by the following units which in turn dropped pickets to be gathered up, by the rearguard. Corps headquarters in the rear was kept informed of the division's movement by signal lamp. Signalers from the two leading brigades intermittently flashed the letters of the divisional call signal, in a southwesterly direction from every prominent hilltop along the route. These arrangements worked well and the division arrived intact in the vicinity of Arak el Menchie and al Faluya. The Australian Mounted Division was followed by the 4th Light Horse Brigade Field Ambulance and the divisional train made up of brigade transport and supply sections carrying rations. The field ambulance set up a dressing station and treated about 40 wounded men before moving through Hooge at 1600 hours. After encountering rugged mountainous ravines and six miles of very rough terrain, at around midnight they set up camp in a wadi bed. The Yeomanry Mounted Division had been in hills north of Beersheba fighting in the line at Tel El Quilf with infantry from the 53rd Division, the Half County of London Yeomanry Regiment and the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade until Allenby ordered it to rejoin the Desert Mounted Corps, 20 miles away on the coast. Meanwhile, the infantry from the 60th Division marched to Hooge during the afternoon of the 9th of November, obtaining water there. Infantry in the 10th and 74th Divisions remained at calm. Chapter 2 Section 2 Positions of Armies on the 10th of November the 52nd Division had ended the possibility of an Ottoman stand on the Wadi Hesse and the next natural defensive line was 7 to 15 miles to the north, on the Nasuka Rare. Allenby had issued orders on 9 November to advance to El Tyne at Beit Daras in an attempt to turn the Ottoman, Nasuka Rare line before it could be firmly established. Meanwhile, Disorganized and demoralized Ottoman columns were harassed as they retreated by the Royal Flying Corps dropping bombs and firing machine guns. Aircraft also dropped bombs on El Tyne railway station and detonated the ammunition depot. 
By the 10th of November infantry in the 52nd and 75th Divisions had advanced to the line Beit de Rassis dued with the leading brigade of the 52nd Division successfully attacking a strong Ottoman rearguard defending East Du. Despite these difficulties the Ottoman army successfully carried out a difficult retreat to establish a new defensive position on an extensive and well-chosen position. The new line stretched about 20 miles west to east from the mouth of the Nasukarea on the Mediterranean Sea to Bight Jibreen not far from Tel El Khorilf in the Judean hills. The Ottoman Eighth Army on the coastal sector was still retreating when ordered to form the new line along the north side of the valley of the Nasukarea, more than 25 miles from Gaza. Further inland the Ottoman Seventh Army was in relatively good condition having retired 10 miles or so without interference and was preparing to launch a counter-attack. Reinforcements, transport and supplies were not a problem for these two Ottoman armies as they were falling back on their lines of communication. Their defensive line ran more or less parallel to and 10 miles or so in front of both road links and the railway. The Jaffa to Jerusalem Railway, with connections northwards to Damascus and Istanbul, had a line branching southwards to El Tyne which branched again to Gaza and Beersheba. These lines could still be used to transport supplies and reinforcements, quickly and efficiently to the Ottoman army's front line. Indeed, a general strengthening of resistance along the Wadi Sukarea line was concentrated around Castina, towards which the 2nd Light Horse Brigade advanced, capturing a refugee column between Swafa and Castina. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Infantry Capture East Jude and Nasukarea The series of engagements leading up to the Battle of Mughar Ridge began on 10 November near East Jude. The leading brigade of the 52nd Division, the 156th Brigade, advanced 15 miles despite encountering stiff Ottoman resistance around East Jude and was subjected to artillery bombardment from across the Nasukarea. Two brigades of the Anzac Mounted Division followed the 156th Brigade pushing across the Nasukarea at Jisa Esdud, to Harmama. Here they successfully established a bridgehead on the Ottoman right flank. Ample water was found and the bridgehead was enlarged the following day. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 3 Mounted Advance Towards Sumil The Australian Mounted Division, which had left Huge after dark on the night of 9-10 November bound for Tel El Hesi, arrived there at 4.30. They halted until dawn on 10 November when several large pools of good water were found in the wadi. These allowed the horses to drink their fill, some that had missed out on watering before the trek, had been without water for three days and four nights. The division then came up into position on the right. The Anzac Mounted Division reported on the morning of the 10th of November that the division was ridden out and had to halt for water. Meanwhile, the 12th Light Horse Regiment advanced north from Berrier to Al Faluya, arriving at 2400 hours on the 10th of September November when engineering stores and five burnt out aircraft were captured. The 4th Light Horse Brigade was ordered at 10.40 on 10 November to threaten the Ottoman force opposing 3rd Light Horse Brigade on the Menchie Al Faluya line. Between 8 o'clock and 10.30, the 3rd Light Horse Brigade had occupied the Arak El Menchie station while the 4th Light Horse Brigade entered Al Faluya two miles to the northwest. The Australian Mounted Division was joined a few hours later by the Yeomanry Mounted Division which had left Huge early in the morning. They came up on the right of the Australian Mounted Division, and took over Arak El Menchie extending the line a little further east. By the afternoon of 10 November the whole of the Desert Mounted Corps with the exception of the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, were in line from a point a little east of Arak El Menchie to the sea. Both the Australian and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions reconnoitred the left half of the Ottoman line running from Castina, roughly through Balin and Barksia, to the neighborhood of Bight Jibreen in the foothills of the Judean Hills, Dr. Chavel ordered the Yeomanry Mounted Division to move westward to the coast, leaving the Australian Mounted Division on the right flank. Neither he nor Hodgson, commanding the Australian Mounted Division, were aware at that time that the division was threatened by three or four Ottoman Eighth Army Infantry Divisions. The 16th and 26th Divisions and the 53rd Division were holding a six-miles line between the railway line and Bight Jibreen, 
all more or less reorganized and all within striking distance. However, Chevelle's reliance on the steadiness of the Australian Mounted Division was fully justified. With its headquarters at Al Fallujah on 10 and the 11th of November, the Australian Mounted Division became engaged in stubborn fighting. Ottoman trenches had been dug from Sumal four miles north of Arak el Menchie to Zeta, three miles to the northeast, and to the east of the railway line. The three brigades of the Australian Mounted Division ran into this Ottoman rearguard's left flank near the village of Sumal. Ottoman forces were advancing from Sumal by 12.55 and the 4th Light Horse Brigade was deployed to attack them with the 3rd Light Horse Brigade assisting. At 14.55 patrols reported strong Ottoman positions along the zeta sumal barksia line with trenches extending west of Sumal village. Two Ottoman guns were seen being placed in a well-sighted position with no cover for 3,000 yards in front, which would require a long dismounted attack. By 1530 the 4th Light Horse Brigade was approaching Summel when ordered to attack from the north with the 5th Mounted Brigade supported by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade threatening Summel from the west. By 1630 3rd Light Horse Brigade headquarters were established 870 yards southeast of Alfaluya on the railway line, but owing to darkness at 1715 the attack was not developed and night battle outpost lines were established at 20 hundred hours. By 1800 hours the 4th Light Horse Brigade was holding a line linking to the Anzac Mounted Division at Beit Afen, while the Ottomans were holding a ridge near Barksia with three cavalry troops, three guns and about 1,500 infantry. The Mounted Infantry and Cavalry Brigades were unable to advance further due to intense Ottoman artillery fire which continued throughout the day. However, Summer was occupied unopposed, during the morning of the 11th of November. The 4th Light Horse Brigade casualties were one other rank killed, one officer and nine other ranks wounded. These wounded soldiers were probably treated by the 4th Light Horse Field Ambulance which was in the field a couple of miles past Al Faluya. The ambulance had itself suffered two casualties when subjected to artillery fire from the hills. But they halted and put up a tent and after dark took in eight more patients all hit by high explosive shells from the 4th Light Horse Regiment. They were busy until midnight, two seriously wounded soldiers being evacuated to a casualty clearing station, and the rest were kept till morning. My infantry have, on the coast, got ten miles n. of Ascalon, and my cavalry, further inland, are ahead of them. The mounted troops took some 15 guns and 700 prisoners yesterday, this afternoon I went to Khan Yunis and told the headmen that they could now go out of the town, to their farms and gardens, the villagers, some 9,000, have been kept in, by wired enclosures, up to now as the Turks had agents there, and many warm sympathizers. Chapter 2 Section 3, Position on the 11th of November Allenby decided that an advance on Junction Station could most easily be made from the southwest, by turning the Ottoman army's right flank on the coast. The 11th and the 12th of November were days of preparation for battle the following day. The Anzac Mounted Division were resting at Harmama, when their supporting Australian Army Service Corps personnel caught up and distributed supplies for man and horse. This task was performed by the echelon wagons of brigades transport and supply sections forming an improvised Anzac divisional train. It was here also that the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade rejoined the division at 2300 hours on the 12th of November. Supplies for the advance were transported over land and by sea but it was only with great difficulty that two infantry divisions of 21 Corps and three mounted divisions of Desert Mounted Corps were maintained in the advance at such distances from base. The Navy transported stores to the mouths of the Wadi Hesse and the Nasu Korea as these lines were secured. The railhead was being pushed forward as rapidly as possible, but did not reach Deer Sunniad until 28 November. So it was a considerable distance over which the Egyptian Camel Transport Corps worked to bring up supplies. The Australian Mounted Division occupied Summerl unopposed at dawn on the 11th of November but was unable to advance in the face of gathering opposition from the immediate northeast. Summil had been found deserted at six o'clock by patrols of 3rd Light Horse Brigade. 
but by 9.30 the 10th Light Horse Regiment reported Ottoman units in strength, holding a high ridge 1.5 miles northeast of the town. At the same time Ottoman field guns began shelling Sumil from a position on high ground about three miles east of the town. Following instructions from Australian Mounted Division received at 1400 hours, the 10th Light Horse Regiment carried out active patrolling. They made themselves as conspicuous as possible without becoming seriously engaged while the remainder of the division advanced north. The New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was ordered to rejoin the Anzac Mounted Division. The brigade left Beersheba at 16.30 on the 11th of November and made a forced march of 52 miles. Their Auckland Mounted Rifle Regiment, which had been in the front line with the 53rd Division about Tel El Kuaif in the southern Judean hills not far from Hebron, made a forced march of 62 miles. These treks were estimated to have taken 181 halves hours, with a halt to rest and water at Kaich. Jemaim early on the 12th of November. They arrived at Harmama that night at 2300 hours some 30 and half hours later. Chapter 2 Section 4, Allenby prepares for battle as Cress counter-attacks. The 20 miles defensive line, chosen by the Ottoman commanders to rally their 20,000 strong army and stop the invasion, was also designed to protect the Jaffa to Jerusalem railway and the threatened junction station. Their choice of position was partly dictated by pressure from the British, Australian, Indian and New Zealand advance, and partly by the terrain. The line north of the Nile Rubin ran nearly north-south and parallel to, but about five miles to the west of the railway line branching southwards. It ran along a high steep ridge connecting the hillside villages of Al Magar and Zanuka and extended northwestwards to El Qubai B. The southern extremity of this ridge commanded the flat country to the west and southwest, for a distance of two miles or more. Prisoners from almost every unit of the Ottoman army were being captured indicating that rearguards had been driven back in on the main body of the two Ottoman armies. All along their line Ottoman resistance grew noticeably stronger. The Ottoman line was defended by the 8th Army's 3rd Division to the north, the 7th Division to the east, the 54th Division near El Mesmier and the 26th Division holding Tel S. Safi. Erich von Falkenhayn, the overall commander of the Ottoman armies, had resolved to make a stand in front of Junction Station and succeeded in deploying his forces by the evening of the 11th of November. He ordered a counter-attack against the British right flank which was covered by the Australian Mounted Division. His plan was to overwhelm them, cut their supply lines, outflank and capture all the Egyptian Expeditionary Forces forward units. Originally ordered for the 11th of November it was postponed until the next day. Meanwhile, Allenby's plan for the 13th of November was to turn the right flank of the Ottoman line on the coast, despite aircraft and cavalry reconnaissances revealing a considerable Ottoman force further inland on the Egyptian Expeditionary Force's own right flank. He assigned the task of dealing with this immediate threat to the Australian Mounted Division, which was ordered to make as big a demonstration of their operations as possible. This would further focus Ottoman attention away from the coastal sector where the Anzac and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions would advance northwards to attempt to turn the Ottoman right flank assisted by infantry attacks on the Ottoman right centre the following day. Allenby's force was deployed with infantry from the 52nd Division and the 75th Division in the centre, the Australian Mounted Division on their right flank with the Anzac and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions on the infantry's left flank. He ordered the 52nd Division to extend their position across the Nasu Karair on the Ottoman right flank. And, reinforced with two additional brigades, he ordered the Australian Mounted Division to advance towards Tel Es Tafi where they encountered a determined and substantial Ottoman counter-attack. Chapter 2 Section 4 Subsection 2 Infantry Attack Brown Hill, 12 November the 52nd Division was to make a preparatory attack near the coast to open the way for the attack on Junction Station the next day. They were to attack north of the Nasu Karair between the villages of Burka and Yazur with the Yeomanry Mounted Division acting as flank guard. Their objective was an important Ottoman rearguard position which ran from the village of Burka to Brown Hill. While the village was easily taken it was necessary to make an extremely difficult attack on the steep-sided brown hill. 
The hill was topped by a large cairn and commanded a long field of fire over the plain southwards across the Nasuka Rair. By the time a battalion of the 156th Brigade, covered by two batteries of the 264th Brigade Royal Field Artillery and the South African Field Artillery Brigade of 75th Division, captured the crest it had been reduced to a handful of men. But just 20 minutes after taking Brown Hill the remnants of the Scots battalion was unable to withstand an Ottoman counterattack and was driven off after a fierce struggle at close quarters. The two-thirds Gurkha rifles were then ordered to renew the attack at dusk. Owing to poor light, the artillery was no longer able to give much assistance, but nevertheless the Gurkhas quickly retook the hill with a bayonet charge, suffering 50 casualties, and in the process recovering two Lewis guns. The attacking battalion suffered over 400 killed or wounded, while the defending Ottoman 7th Division must have also suffered heavy casualties, 170 dead Ottoman soldiers were found on the battlefield. The fighting here has been described as equal to the 157th Brigade's encounter at Sausage Ridge on 8 November. The success of these operations north of the Nasukare opened the way for the main attacks the following day, on the Ottoman army's front-line positions. Chapter 2 Section 4 Subsection 3 Ottoman Counterattack Australian Mounted Division, 12 November Meanwhile, the Australian Mounted Division advanced in the direction of Tel Es Safi to press the left flank of the Ottoman forces as strongly as possible. About 4,000 Australian, and British mounted troops of 3rd and 4th Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades moved northwards in a conspicuous demonstration of aggression. At first it appeared that the Ottoman formations had retired altogether, the 9th Light Horse Regiment rode through Barksia, one troop, pressing on to occupy Tel Es Safi. The 5th Mounted Brigade also found Balin unoccupied, and rapidly advanced northwards towards Tel Es Safi and Kastine. By 12 o'clock the Australian Mounted Division was spread over at least six miles facing the north and east when four divisions of the Ottoman 7th Army began their advance southwards from the railway. The Ottoman infantry divisions began moving south from El Tyne three miles east of Castina from the Ottoman-controlled branch line of the railway line running southwards in the direction of Huj. Here and further north along the railway trains were stopping to allow huge numbers of troops to take to the field. Soon after the 11th Light Horse Regiment was forced to retire from Castina as Ottoman units occupied the place in strength. Then at 12 o'clock three separate columns were seen advancing towards Tel Es, Safi from the north and northeast. Ten minutes later the British Honourable Artillery Company battery opened fire, but was hopelessly outshot, outnumbered, and outranged by Ottoman guns of greater power and weight. The approach of the 8th Ottoman Army's 20 call, was at first unknown to the 5th Mounted Brigade in Balin. But at about 1300 hours a force estimated at 5,000 Ottoman soldiers suddenly attacked and almost surrounded the Mounted Brigade. The attack was made by two Ottoman columns, one coming down the track from Junction Station to Tel El Safi and the other by rail to El Tyne Station. It was by far the heaviest counterattack experienced since the breakthrough by the Egyptian expeditionary force at Sharia on the 7th of November. The Royal Gloucestershire Hussars and Warwickshire Yeomanry regiments of 5th Mounted Brigade were pushed back out of Balin before being reinforced by the Worcestershire Yeomanry. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade was sent up at a canter from Summil, followed by the remaining two batteries of the Australian Mounted Division. One light horse regiment occupied Berkuzi but was forced to retire by an attack from a very strong Ottoman force, supported by heavy artillery fire from several batteries. All available troops of the Australian Mounted Division were now engaged, and the Ottoman attack continued to be pressed. The counterattack forced the Mounted Division to concede the territory gained during the day, before fighting the Ottoman army to a standstill in front of Summel. The 4th Light Horse Brigade could render no effective aid to the 3rd Light Horse or the 5th Mounted Yeomanry Brigades. It was strung out to the west as far as the Der Sunade railway line and was being heavily attacked. Ottoman units managed to advance to within 100 yards of the 4th Light Horse Brigade's position, only at the end of the day was this strong Ottoman attack repulsed by machine gun and rifle fire. 
Hodgson ordered a slow withdrawal by 3rd Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades to high ground on the line Beer Summel Kerbet Geladier. The order had only just been given when another Ottoman train was sighted moving to the south. It stopped west of Balin and escorted a fresh force of Ottoman soldiers, who deployed rapidly to advance against the left flank of the 5th Mounted Brigade. Two batteries of Australian Mounted Division were in action on the high ground northwest of Sumil firing on this fresh Ottoman force moving over the open plain in full view of the gunners. The artillery fire was so effective the attacking Ottoman advance was halted, forcing them to fall back a little where they dug trenches. Fighting steadily and withdrawing skillfully, the 3rd Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades had reached the edge of Sumil village where the Ottoman attack was finally held. The attack ended at 1800 hours in darkness. The Ottoman attackers dug themselves in on a line through Balin and Perkuzi while the line taken up by the Australian Mounted Division began with the 3rd Light Horse Brigade facing east on a line running due north from about halfway between Iraq El Menchie and Sumil. The line then turned westward so the 5th Mounted Brigade faced northwards in front of Sumil with the 4th Light Horse Brigade to their left in front of Ipsair and connecting with the right of the Infantry Division, the 75th Division at Swafa es Sharkia. A critical situation created by the strong Ottoman attacking forces had been controlled by the coolness and steadiness of the troops, especially the machine gun squadrons of the 5th Mounted and the 4th Light Horse Brigades. The Australian Mounted Division suffered about 50 casualties mainly from the 5th Mounted Brigade. To the east, von Falkenhayn held his reserve force of 3rd Cavalry Division and 19th Division in front of Beit Jabrin. They waited throughout the day for the main attack to make progress before beginning their own advance, but the opportunity never eventuated. This powerful Ottoman counterattack had been contained and had not forced any rearrangement of the invading forces whose preparations and concentration on the plain were now complete. But von Falkenhayn was forced to halt his 7th Army's attack and then to take away from it the 16th Division plus 1 Regiment. Chapter 3, Rattle In southern Palestine the wet season was approaching with another thunderstorm and heavy rain on the night of the 11th of November. The dark cotton soil over which the Egyptian expeditionary force was now advancing would not need much more rain to turn it into impassable mud. But the 12th of November had been fine, and the roads had dried out. The rolling maritime plain was dotted with villages on low hill tops, surrounded by groves and orchards. These were in turn surrounded by hedges of prickly pear or cactus, making them strong natural places of defence. In the distance to the right the spurs and valleys of the Judean hills were visible even to the invading British Empire troops near the Mediterranean coast. On the 13th of November the weather was clear and fine with at first no sign of the Ottoman army. The 20,000 strong Ottoman force was deployed to defend the Jaffa to Jerusalem railway along the Wadi al Sarah and al Nabi Rubin. The battlefield was generally cultivated but with winter approaching it was bare and open. Its most prominent feature, the 100-foot-high ridge which continues north towards Danuka, and El Kubaybi formed the backbone of the Ottoman army's 20-mile-long defensive position. The naturally strong Ottoman line was defended by the 8th Army's 3rd Division to the north, the 7th Division to the east, the 54th Division near El Mesmie, and the 26th Division holding Tel Es Safi. Benefiting from the terrain two strong defensive positions with commanding views of the countryside were located on the ridge. They were the villages of Katra and Al-Magar. These villages were separated by the Wadi Jamus which links the Wadi Al-Sarah with the Nah Rubin. While the Ottoman counterattack had been in progress on 12 November, Allen Lee issued orders for the attack on 13 November to the commanders of 21 Corps and Desert Mounted Corps at the latter's headquarters near Julus. The main attack was to be carried out by the 21st Corps 52nd and 75th Divisions westwards towards Junction Station between the Gaza Road on the right, and El Mugar on the left. On the right flank of the 21st Corps the Australian Mounted Divisions 3rd and 4th Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades, reinforced by the 2nd Light Horse Brigade, the 7th Mounted Brigade and two cars of the 12th Lamb Battery, would attack in line advancing northwards towards Junction Station. 
The remainder of Desert Mounted Corps, the Anzac and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions would cover the left flank of 21 Corps, with Yibna as their first objective and Akia the second. As soon as Junction Station was captured they were to swing north to occupy Ramla and Lod and reconnoiter towards Jaffa. Chapter 3 Section 1, In the Center During the first phase of the attack by infantry in the 75th Division were to capture the line Tel El Tomas Castina Yazur and then seize Mesmier. On their left infantry in the 52nd Division were to secure the line Yazur Bishit and then seize Katra. After a pause for the artillery to be brought forward, the second phase attacks on the final objectives of Junction Station for the 75th and Almansura for the 52nd Divisions were to be made. The first phase was due to start at 8 o'clock hours on 13 November preceded by one hour's bombardment. By 10 o'clock the two-fourths Somerset Light Infantry, 1 5th Devonshire Regiment, 2 5th Hampshire Regiment, 1 quarter Wiltshire Regiment, two-thirds and three th-slash-three-rd Gurkha rifles were advancing along the main road. They occupied the undefended villages of Tall Altomus, Castina, and Yezior. The 52nd Division had already occupied Bashit. The 75th Division proceeded to attack Mesmier on a lower and southward extension of the ridge on which Katra and El Magar were situated with the 52nd Division attacking directly towards these two villages. But these attacks were held up by very strong Ottoman defences. At Mesmier, the Ottoman army was strongly posted on high ground in and near the village, and well sighted machine guns swept all approaches. Infantry in the 75th Division made steady slow progress, the main body of the Ottoman rearguard eventually falling back to a slight ridge one mile to the northeast. The attack by three-thirds Gurkhas and infantry in the 234th Brigade moved up to Mesmier El Gabie and cleared the place of snipers. One company of 58th Vaughan's rifles suffered heavy casualties during an Ottoman attack on the flank of infantry in the 233rd Brigade. Towards dusk the final stage of the infantry assault was supported by two troops of 11th Light Horse Regiment, who galloped into action on the infantry's right flank and gave valuable fire support. An infantry frontal attack, covered by machine gun fire drove the Ottoman defenders off the ridge, enabling Mesmier-ish Herkier to be occupied soon after. With Ottoman resistance broken infantry in the 75th Division pushed on through Mesmier where they took 300 prisoners, and although ordered to capture Junction Station they halted short of their objective in darkness. Chapter 3 Section 2, On the Flanks The Australian Mounted Division covered the right flank of the infantry divisions. At 10 o'clock the 4th Light Horse Brigade moved forward but was held up, by an Ottoman position covering El Tyne. The brigade was ordered at 11.50 to push forward to protect the right of the 233rd Brigade as their attack had succeeded and they advanced to occupy Mesmier. In order for the 4th Light Horse to move the 7th Mounted Brigade was ordered to relieve them in the line. At 12 o'clock troops of the 4th Light Horse Brigade entered Kazaza two miles south-southeast of Junction Station with the 7th Mounted Brigade on its left then only 0.5 miles from the station. By 1600 hours the 4th Light Horse Brigade was ordered to push forward to El Tyne as the infantry advance on their left was progressing. It was occupied the following morning. The Yeomanry Mounted Division, with the Anzac Mounted Division in reserve, covered the infantry's left flank. Yibna was captured by the 8th Mounted Brigade, which then advanced northwards against El Qubib and Zanuka. The 22nd Mounted Brigade was held up by Ottoman units defending Akia, while the 6th Mounted Brigade was directed against El Mughar. Chapter 3, Section 3 Charge at El Mughar. At about 11.30 the two leading battalions of the 155th Brigade Division, were advancing under heavy shrapnel and machine gun fire to the shelter of the Wadi Jamus about 600 yards from their objective. But every attempt to leave the Wadi was stopped by very heavy fire from well-placed machine guns. The reserve battalion was brought up but an attempt to work up the Wadi between Katra and El Mughar, was barred by heavy machine gun fire from the villages. 
At about 1430 it was agreed between the Gork 52nd Division and the Gork Yeomanry Mounted Division that the 6th Mounted Brigade should attack El Mughar Ridge in combination with a renewed assault on Katra, and El Mughar by the 52nd Division. Half an hour later the Royal Buckinghamshire Yeomanry and the Queen's Own Dorset Yeomanry, already in the Wadi Jamus, advanced in column of squadrons extended to four paces across three thousand yards at first trotting then galloping onto the crest of the ridge. They gained the ridge but the horses were completely exhausted and could not continue the pursuit of the escaping Ottoman units down the far side. The charge cost sixteen killed, one hundred and fourteen wounded and two hundred and sixty-five horses, sixteen percent of personnel and thirty-three percent of horses. However, the Ottoman defenders continued to hold El Mughar village until two squadrons of the Berkshire Yeomanry of the 6th Mounted Brigade fighting dismounted, with two battalions of the 155th Brigade Division, renewed the attack. Fighting in the village continued until 1700 hours when they succeeded in capturing the two crucial fortified villages of Katra, and El Mughar but at a cost of 500 casualties. Two field guns and 14 machine guns were captured. The prisoners and dead amounted to 18 officers and 1,078 other ranks and more than 2,000 dead Ottoman soldiers. Chapter 4 Aftermath Junction Station was occupied, during the morning and during the following days other villages in the area were found to have been abandoned. Units of the 75th Division supported by several armoured cars occupied Junction Station during the morning of the 14th of November cutting the Jaffa to Jerusalem Railway. Seventeen days of operations virtually without rest, had resulted in an advance of 60 miles from Beersheba, major and minor engagements occurring on 13 of those days. Most of the mounted units had covered at least 170 miles since 29 October 1917 capturing 5,270 prisoners and over 60 guns and about 50 machine guns. At Junction Station two train engines and 60 trucks in the station were captured along with an undamaged and fully functioning steam pumping plant which supplied unlimited, easily accessible water. Junction Station, with its branch line running south to El Tyne and extensions southwards towards Beersheba and Gaza was an important centre for both sides' lines of communication. On the 14th of November at 6.34th Light Horse Brigade entered El Tyne with the rest of the Australian Mounted Division following a couple of hours later. Here good wells containing plenty of water were found but without steam pumps and so watering was not complete until 1600 hours. The horses had done all that had been asked of them, existing during this time on only 91 halves of a pound of grain ration and scarce water while all the time carrying about 21 stone. That they were able to carry on into the Judean hills after only a limited period of rest established a remarkable record. Meanwhile, the Australian Mounted Divisional Supply Train followed the fighting units as closely as they could, moving out from Beersheba via Hera and Gaza on the 11th of November to East Jude on the 14th of November, to Miami the day after and Junction Station on the 16th of November. During the 14th of November infantry in the 52nd and 75th Divisions concentrated and reorganized their ranks. The advance was taken over by the Yeomanry Mounted Division which crossed the railway north of Junction Station and the Anzac Mounted Division which pressed the retreating Ottoman army northwards near the coast. On 14 November the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade ran into a determined and well-entrenched Ottoman rearguard near Ayunkara, which they attacked. Fierce close-quarter fighting against the Ottoman 3rd Infantry Division continued during the afternoon. Although severely threatened, the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade eventually prevailed and went on to occupy Jaffa two days later. The Anzac Mounted Division had been ordered to cut the road linking Jaffa to Jerusalem by capturing Ramleh and Lud. This was the only main road from the coast through Ramleh up the Vale of Adulon to Jerusalem. During the morning, Meldrum's New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade crossed the river close to the sand dunes with 1st Light Horse Brigade on its right. By 9 o'clock El Qubaybi had been occupied by the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade before pushing on towards the Wadi Hunain. Here Ottoman rearguards were encountered in the orange groves and on the hills between El Qubaybi and the sand dunes. 
About noon the 1st Light Horse Brigade drove an Ottoman rearguard from a ridge facing Yubna where the Anzac Mounted Division had bivouacked the night before and occupied the village of Rehovot also called Deeran. At the same time the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade fought off a strongly entrenched rearguard at Ayunkara. After conceding considerable ground the Ottoman soldiers made a vigorous counter-attack but were finally defeated. Chapter 4 Section 1 15 the 16th of November 1917. At midnight on the 14th of November Falkenhayn ordered a general withdrawal and in the days following the Ottoman 7th Army fell back into the Judean hills towards Jerusalem while the 8th Army retreated north of Jaffa across the Nahr el Auja. The Ottoman armies suffered heavily and their subsequent withdrawal resulted in the loss of substantial territory, between 40 to 60 miles was invaded by the British north of the old Gaza Beersheba line. In its wake the two Ottoman armies left behind 10,000 prisoners of war and 100 guns. The day after the action at Ayunkara, the 75th Division and the Australian Mounted Division advanced towards Latron where the Jaffa to Jerusalem road enters the Judean hills, while the Anzac Mounted Division occupied Ramleh and Lud. An Ottoman rearguard above Abu Shusha blocked the Vale of Adulon on the right flank of the advance on Ramleh. This rearguard position was charged and overwhelmed by the 6th Mounted Brigade. On 16 November Latron itself was captured and the first British unit to enter Jaffa, the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade occupied the city, without opposition. They administered Jaffa until representatives of the Director of Occupied Enemy Territory arrived. And marking the end of the British Empire's first advance into Palestine, the Ottoman Eighth Army retired to the northern bank of the Auja River some three miles north of Jaffa, and the Seventh Army retreated into the Judean hills. Since the advance from Gaza and Beersheba began very heavy casualties and losses had been inflicted. The invasion had spread 50 miles northwards into Ottoman territory while over 10,000 Ottoman prisoners of war and 100 guns had been captured by the victorious Egyptian expeditionary force. Chapter 4 Section 2 Desert Mounted Corps Medical Support The three divisional receiving stations of the Anzac, Australian and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions operated in Echelon. As soon as one had evacuated all wounded to the rear, they moved ahead of the other two divisional receiving stations to repeat the process. However, from the beginning there were problems evacuating casualties caused by the lack of linking infrastructure, one receiving station lost all its transport, and the light motor ambulances of another disappeared. The greatest difficulty were of communication and traveling including mechanical breakdowns on the rough roads and tracks which quickly became impassable for motor traffic. Chapter 4 Section 3 Advance into Judean Hills The advance towards Jerusalem began on 19 November and the city was captured during the Battle of Jerusalem on 9 December, three weeks later.